I basically came to say to all you guys, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming up and talking to all the folks in the country. Kids from around the country are heading to it's Washington, D.C. affects some 3 million people in this country. Right now, there's no cure. One for type local one teen diabetes. is playing a major role in the fight, and he's getting some big recognition for his work. Joining me now to talk about the Children's Congress 2013 is Reed Gilketsis. It's the opening day of the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation's Children's Congress. Here with us now from Washington, shooting guard for the NBA champions, the Miami Heat. Hey. Ray Allen, tomorrow Ray will testify before the Senate Special Committee on Aging to make his case for more funding for type 1 diabetes research. It's an issue that's near to Ray's heart. What is it that you, you want to see accomplished? We want to make sure that uh, Congress continues to renew uh, these funds, making sure kids have the, the tools necessary to take care of their diabetes, make sure that there is great awareness going on, not only amongst the families, but in the communities and the schools around America. This Children's Congress, child delegates from right. Today, the famous and those struggling with the disease tug Capitol Hill's heartstrings. They want money to find a cure. This is our eighth Children's Congress event, and we promise and promise is a word you're going to hear a lot this weekend. Right here in this very room are 161 of the most extraordinary people. You are here because you live with type 1 diabetes every single day. You manage it and you triumph over it. You were handpicked from a nationwide group of 1,500 extraordinarily smart, articulate, motivated, and talented people. This week, each and every one of you will see what a powerful force for change you will be. I have to say a very special thank you to my extraordinary co-chair, Angie Platt. We were so excited to work with Angie and her husband, John, and son, Jonathan. With their efforts, we have arrived now at our first day of Children's Congress, and we have an amazing event on tap. We appreciate all of their help. Like many of you, I, I am a parent of a child with type 1 diabetes. My son was diagnosed uh, about 11 years ago now at the age of 7 and he's now going off to college. I'm excited about the life he's going to have and uh, as many of you would expect, a bit afraid for him in this transition. Um, but I know that JDRF is going to improve the quality of his life, that what we're doing here, what you're doing, the work we're going to do together is going to have an impact on the quality of his life. It's going to keep him safe and healthy until we can cure this disease, which I, I believe we will. We have true role models here from various walks of life who do exciting things. And if you're wondering, gee, what can I do with diabetes that I have to deal with every day? You can do anything. And I think this is a perfect illustration uh, right here today. First up, she has most recently been with uh, the news magazine Dateline on network television. Please welcome in Leslie Atkins. He is an award-winning chef. You probably know him from Top Chef. Sam Talbot. Our next panelist is a young actress with uh, impressive credits on her resume already, even though she's just a teenager. Please welcome in Mary Mauser. He was ninth currently in the latest edition of the Indianapolis 500. Please welcome in Charlie Kimball. And our final panelist is on the front lines of uh, diabetes research. Please welcome in Dr. Aaron Kowalski. Time for your questions. How do you come up with new recipes and how do you figure out the carbohydrate What do you need to do in order them? to prepare your blood sugar numbers before a race? Has diabetes affected your career in a positive or negative way? I have a very important question for you, Mary. Um, are you single? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm available, so. How great is this panel? Can we hear it? We are fortunate to have our corporate and industry partners here with us for lunch this afternoon. These partners play a crucial role in helping us support our mission, in accelerating our fundraising for research. They help us to achieve our vision of a world without type 1 diabetes. On behalf of everyone at JDRF, I want to thank these corporate partners for their support and their dedication. Their commitment inspires all of us in the work that we do. We're proud to honor each of our partners here today. They build and strengthen our efforts in exceptional ways. 
our elite partners are Advanced Auto Parts, the Ford Motor Company, and Marshalls. Please welcome to the stage JDRF 2013 Children's Congress delegates to accept the award on Advanced Auto Parts behalf. Ford Motor Company has been a JDRF partner since 1983. Marshalls has partnered with JDRF since 1994. We're going to introduce our corporate and industry partners, Novo Nordisk, BD Medical Diabetes, Genentech, Lilly Diabetes, and Medtronic. We want to just say thank you to Crystal Bowersox for coming back. It's such an honor to have you here with all of the delegates. In the busy lives, in the coming days, you and I will go. thinking, I'm just a kid, but your voices will have a powerful impact on our national leaders, I promise. You were each individually chosen because the Volunteer Selection Committee at JDRF knew you would be powerful advocates for a cure. As JDRF advocates, we knew that you were best suited to use your voice and your energy here in Washington, D.C., and up on Capitol Hill, and then back again at home in your own congressional district, in your own town. Advocates just like you can and will make a difference in the global fight against type 1 diabetes. The meeting will come to order. I'm Bill Nelson. I'm from Florida. Susan Collins is from Maine. We want to welcome all of you and this is a very special topic today of which you are intimately familiar. And so I want to turn to our ranking member, Senator Collins, for her statement. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. This is my seventh consecutive Children's Congress hearing, and I'm very grateful to Chairman Nelson for allowing me to continue this tradition. I'm pleased to tell you that there is strong support in Congress for diabetes research funding, thanks in no small measure to the grassroots support provided by the JDRF volunteers. You really inspire us to work even harder. Thank you. First, we're going to hear from Jean Smart. Ms. Smart is an Emmy-winning television film stage actress who was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 13. Senator Nelson, Senator Collins, and members of the committee, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to appear here today and talk about an issue that is important to all these great kids and their their families and their guardians, and I myself, and that's the issue of living life with uh, type 1 diabetes. You know, it's hard for me to remember what life was like before I had diabetes, and sometimes, selfishly, of course, I wish that I could just remember what that was like, to feel what that was like, to not be diabetic. What I really pray for is that the next generation of beautiful children like these don't ever have to go through the uncertainty and the fears of being diabetic or the physical tolls that it can take on their bodies. I am able to appear here before you and to thank you and to thank Congress and to thank the JDRF 
for all you've done to promote type 1 diabetes research, and I ask that you please, please continue your efforts so that one day we can actually all say, everybody in this room can say, remember that day that we cured diabetes. Thank you. The Miami Heat, we played 106 games this past season. We had game days, practice days, travel days, even a few off days. Days to rest, days to heal, days to rejuvenate, recharge. But for Walker here, and I know a lot of the kids here in this room and a lot of uh, the, the people living with diabetes, there are no off days. We dream a day when Walker can leave this disease behind with the continued support of Congress for the Special Diabetes Program, with the investment of JDRF in the private sector, and a dedication and commitment all, all the families in this room and all around America, all around the world, today and hundreds of thousands of other people in other countries that we will create a world without type 1 diabetes. We have to because together we are a winning team. I'm pleased to report that our investment in type 1 diabetes research continues to improve lives around the country and around the world. These discoveries which have now been found in, in, in animal models but also uh, their equivalent to exist in humans would not have been possible and we're on the precipice of beginning to translate these findings into clinical research, uh, translational research as well as clinical research. All of this work over and above the regular appropriations that we uh, get would not be possible without these special diabetes programs. Diabetes is a health crisis for patients and their families and a financial crisis for every American. With your leadership and the public-private partnership for diabetes research, potential therapies could transform millions of lives and improve the fiscal health of our nation. But we must move forward with urgency and with a long-term commitment to the investments in research that are needed to finish the job. JDRF is funding ourselves more than $100 million in research this year. And we currently have more than 500 million deployed in research programs at work today around the world. JDRF and our many volunteers will keep doing our part. But if we are continue to make progress, to advance towards desperately needed new therapies, to cure, treat, and prevent T1D, we need the federal government to continue to do its part. And that requires a long-term commitment to ensure that vital multi-year research proceeds without interruption. I urge the Congress to fund a three-year extension of the special diabetes program this year at the current funding level. I am a strong person for living with this disease, but every day is a trial by fire. I will never have a day off and even as a teenager, I will never outgrow T1D. Thanks to medical research, life will get better. It has to. I'm not giving up on a cure and hope Congress won't either and will continue to support this special diabetes program, my hope for a cure. I particularly want to thank our delegates and all of the wonderful young people that we have here today. We are making a difference, and I just wanted to pledge my continued support and leadership. And again, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And with that statement, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>